All right, with that out of the way, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and we're going to talk a little bit about clocks, about uh, pendulum clocks, about the escapements and setting the beat. This is a uh, pretty important thing to know about if you've got a pendulum clock and you are um, having trouble with it running. This is one of the first things you should check is the beat. And uh, it's really fairly simple to do. I've got a couple different um, pendulum clocks and uh, movements here to help me show the most common ways of adjusting the beat. So I've got a German clock movement here. I've got a 1902 American metal clock movement. This is a Gilbert. I've an 1880s Seth Thomas clock. And originally I was going to show the um, Seth Thomas clock here, the 1920 Seth Thomas, but um, it's a lot easier on this Gilbert mounted on the demonstration stand to show the escapement on it because it's out of the case. So we're going to use it instead. But uh, basically put, putting a clock in beat is adjusting it so that when it's sitting on a surface, preferably level surface, when the clock runs, the tick is even. And to do that, you adjust the crutch. And I'll explain what these parts are here. It's important to know a few parts. Um, this is the, the verge right here. And this is the verge arbor. Some clocks won't have a verge arbor. Like this clock with its um, front mounted escapement. There is no verge arbor. You can see the verge there is mounted on a little pin on the front of the movement. This gear here is of course the escape wheel and the verge and then the two pallets on the ends of the verge. The, the um, pallet or verge arbor, the crutch which is attached to that arbor or in the case of this style of escapement, the crutch is attached directly to the verge. And then it runs down, the crutch does. The crutch runs down and has a loop on the end where it goes around the pendulum rod. And then the pendulum parts are fairly simple. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated than some because it's got a through the dial regulator. That's really fairly simple. There's usually a uh, some way of altering the effective length of the suspension spring here by use of a check piece. And then this is the um, suspension post and on some designs the suspension post stays stationary and the check piece moves up and down and then uh, in this case the check piece stays stationary and the suspension post moves up and down but we whether it's um, this style escapement and you see the regulation on this one is done with the traditional threaded end there on the pendulum hanger. Or this one. Or this one. The adjusting principle is going to be the same. And this one here, the um, crutch is made out of a stamped piece of brass instead of wire. And there is a clutch 
right there. You can see the Bellevue washer there and the brass hub and the crutch. They're all riveted together there. And um, that's how you adjust one of these later style clocks. You don't have to bend the crutch. You simply hold the um, pallets stationary and then move the crutch back and forth and the friction is tight enough that it will stay in position and in this example there are banking pins there that normally the uh, crutch will never touch when the clock is running normally and that's to provide uh, some limit to the travel so that you don't bottom it out okay <clears throat> so there's a variety of different techniques used to um, adjust the um, the beat um, let's purposely put this clock out of beat here by shimming one foot with a pencil we're going to put it pretty out of beat here. Alright, that's not very subtle. That's very noticeably out of beat. And the clock probably won't run any length of time like this. But the important thing to listen for is the increased dwell on one side of the escapement over the other. You see the, the bottom pallet there, which is called the entry pallet, is dwelling on the escape tooth uh, much longer and going much deeper onto the escape wheel than the other pallet, the exit pallet. The entry pallet being the bottom pallet, the exit pallet being the top pallet. So what we would do and we got a little tool here I'm going to show that you can use. I usually just use my fingers, but a lot of people don't like that. It's better to have some kind of a tool. This is a wire bending tool. You could make one of these fairly easy, but I bought this. It's got a, uh, it's a fairly good sized piece of rod. Not, not quite a quarter of an inch in diameter. With a slot cut in one end, and you can see it's beveled slightly. And the other end has a T-handle. Use that for adjusting the um, hammer and for adjusting the crutch. Just put it on there and you can make adjustments. So we're going to adjust this by bending this crutch wire here. We can see which way the pallets need to be moved in relation to the pendulum. It needs to be moved this way to equalize the operation. So in order to move it that way, we need to put a bend in the crutch wire. Do that with the wire bending tool here. Place it about there, looks about right. And we will bend it. This might be a little bit difficult to do one-handed. But I will see what I can do. a whole lot. We should notice a little bit of change in the beat. Actually we moved it all the way to the opposite didn't we? Doing this one-handed I'll, I'll demonstrate using the fingers method of doing it. Okay we want to adjust it now. 
see it's now it's drilling the opposite way right so we're going to move it the opposite way Here it's getting better. You can still see on that entry pallet there, it's a little longer than it is on that exit pallet. So we need to bend that back a little bit. And it's going to be a little bit of trial and error, just very gently back and forth adjusting it until you get it correct. And so what I'm doing is holding the crutch at the top and bottom, and then with the, other, with the third finger, pushing it slightly. And... Just a tiny little bit, you know, it sprung back, but you can get it adjusted. Getting much closer now, isn't it, each time? We use the lowest possible arc to the pendulum to check it. Not quite perfect, but close enough the clock should run. And obviously, if I wasn't holding a camera, I'd be able to tweak it a little bit easier. But that's a vast improvement from what it was. So, I'm going to take the pencil back out, and we'll have to adjust it again to sit level on the desk. It stopped almost instantly. It's just too out of beat to run. Okay, which way does it need to go? The pallet arbor needs to be bent, adjusted this way. So what we're going to do is we'll stop it, hold this, and move it like this, just a little bit. Almost perfect on the first try that time. The other adjustment you need to do other than adjusting the beat and on this clock you would do basically the same way except in bending you wouldn't bend anything you would just hold one part stationary and move the other say it was um, you needed to move the pallet arbor in relation to that you could just do the like this right here you can very easily move the pallets in relation to the crutch tip to get the beat correct but no bending the clutch does all the adjusting for you 
Uh, but getting back to the second part, the other adjustment that needs to be done is where the crutch goes around the pendulum rod. And this is an adjustment that's done the same way for both of these clocks. Is the pendulum rod needs to hang centered in that slot. And also, we'll zoom in on this a little bit so you can see. This one's a little wide, but it's tolerable. The clock runs pretty well. You do not want the slot to pinch the pendulum rod. It will not run correctly if it does. Also, you want that to be more or less level, the slot. So, once again, a little bit of uh, manual adjusting comes in. To adjust it to where it's centered. And then adjust it to where it's more or less level. And then recheck. Make sure that your uh, adjusting of that did not alter the beat any. And that's basically what you need to know to adjust the beat on a pendulum clock. Now, I don't want you to have any ideas that, since you can adjust it, um, you can set a clock on a crooked shelf and adjust it to where it runs as though it were level, although in reality you can, and in some cases it might be desirable to do that rather than shimming the case up, because that can be also be unsightly. Uh, if the clock is going to be on that shelf more or less permanently, that's what I would do. I would just adjust the clock to run at that location and um, not try to worry about getting the clock level. Same thing with a clock on the wall. If it's on the wall and you're in an old house and things are not quite level anymore, the clock is going to kind of look funny level. So, I would adjust it to where it's parallel with everything else, so it doesn't look out of place, and then adjust the beat accordingly. So, alright, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and thank you for watching. See you next time.